Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for this video, we're going to be discussing Grand Seiko's first ever quartz dive watch, and that is this guy here, the SBGX117. Now they also released a 115 around the same time in 2015 with the white dial, and I think these watches are really hidden gems within the Grand Seiko catalog, and they're actually extremely hard to find now, because they only had a three year production until 2018. That's when Grand Seiko started taking the uh, the dual brand, so the Seiko logo, off the dial and they just put Grand Seiko. And the model of Quartz Diver that was released after 2018 um, had a slightly thicker case and they shifted the crown to the four o'clock position. That is the SBGX335 and that one is readily available. But at the time of recording this video, I couldn't find this watch anywhere on Chrono24 on eBay, so it's quite scarce, but for me, it's actually one of the best grab-and-go dive watches I've experienced on this channel. Now, I think there's a few common characteristics that make the SBGX117 so appealing. Uh, one of them is because, as you're probably aware if you're watching this video, Grand Seiko tends to make very large dive watches at over 44 millimeters in diameter, this guy came in with a case diameter of just under 43 millimeters and only 13 millimeters in thickness. For reference, that's the same thickness as a Rolex Submariner, but you're really getting more of a stance and wrist presence of a Rolex Sea Dweller in a very nice Japanese package, which I really enjoy. So why don't we flip the camera around now, and you guys can actually take a close-up look at this Grand Seiko Quartz Diver in the studio. So why don't we get a little bit closer to this Grand Seiko Quartz dive watch. But one of the things I gotta mention right off the bat here is that this watch feels extremely robust and the build quality is very high. I was fortunate enough to pick this up from another Canadian watch enthusiast who did wear this almost daily and you can see that it has picked up a fair bit of scratches on the case and the bracelet. So this is not a perfect example of the watch, but everything functions just as it should. And I will say that there is some heft to the overall watch. Sized up for my wrist, this watch with the bracelet weighs in at 195 grams. So you're getting some wrist presence, but as I mentioned, I think the proportions for this watch are very good for this style of diver. I measure the case diameter at 42.9 millimeters. And then if you take a look at the side profile, um, so how it spans across the wrist, I measure the lug to lug at 49.6 millimeters. And you can see the lugs themselves have drilled lug holes. So it's easy to swap out the bracelet for a strap if you would like. I do grab the case height at 13 millimeters as I previously mentioned at the start of the video. That's from the bottom of a screw down case back that has the uh, Grand Seiko Lion medallion and then to the top of the sapphire crystal which does carry Grand Seiko's super clear coating to help uh, avoid harsh reflections on the dial. Between the 22 millimeter lugs sits the classic Grand Seiko three link style bracelet. It's an oyster style looking bracelet and it does taper to about 18 millimeters before you hit the clasp. If you want to size individual links, it does use Grand Seiko's pin and collar system. So you have to tap out the pins for individual links, retain the collar and the center link, and then add or remove links as required. If you need to fine tune the adjustment more, you can actually use one of the four micro adjustment anchoring points on the Grand Seiko signed clasp. And if you're familiar with some of Seiko and Grand Seiko's professional divers, you'll know this clasp is a little bit beefy. It does have a fold over security mechanism. And what's cool is that if you actually push this down, you can get some ratcheting and tool free adjustment 
which can be done on the fly. It can even be done while you're wearing it on your wrist, which is a really nice feature to have. So here's a quick in-studio wrist shot, just to show you how well this Grand Seiko Diver wears on a seven and a half inch wrist. And you can see down the barrel, it is planted quite firmly on the wrist. It doesn't move around a lot. And if you do want this watch head to be a little bit more comfortable, you could also throw this guy on a strap. This watch is an absolute strap monster. The dial layout is very symmetrical and no nonsense. So getting a quick read of a time is quite easy to do. Having the dual branding, so the Seiko up top, the Grand Seiko at the bottom, which are both applied onto the dial, does help keep things balanced quite well. And there's nothing to obscure the symmetry of a dial. You don't have a three o'clock date readout. You also don't have an offset power reserve indicator, which you would find on Grand Seiko spring drive models. But you're still getting Grand Seiko like finishing. All of the hour indices are hand applied, multi-faceted with Zuratsu polishing. The handset itself, I believe are titanium and very nicely brushed. You have a classic cathedral style hour hand, the elongated arrow style minute hand, and the seconds hand itself is a needle point with a counterweighted lollipop that's there. Note that the seconds hand just hits the running minutes on the chapter ring perfectly each time. That's the beauty of Grand Seiko 9F quartz calibers. Keeping in mind this watch was released in 2015 when this in-house 9F61 quartz caliber was developed. At the time, I think it was industry leading and it still is. It's a thermal compensated quartz, meaning that the watch and the integrated circuit inside checks the temperature of the watch over 500 times per day and adjusts the oscillation of the quartz crystals, which Grand Seiko grows themselves. And that allows accuracy of within 10 seconds per year, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now moving away from the nice dial, you have a nice glossy black bezel insert with bold white printing. Now this insert almost looks like a ceramic, but it isn't. This happens to be an ADLC coated stainless steel bezel, which you can see still scratches up on this example, but it's resistant to shattering, which can happen with ceramic. Now this font on the bezel insert is really nice in my opinion. Some people find it divisive because you can see the font almost starts off smaller towards the slope towards the dial, but it gets larger as you get to the exterior of the coin edge bezel. But I really personally enjoy it a lot. It's extremely legible. In terms of the bezel action, this is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. The clicks themselves are quite audible and it's got that Seiko muted feel where there's intermediate, less pronounced clicks. But I will say this, it does line up perfectly. And to me, I'm really happy with that. Now with respect to the crown and mid case design, very nice and well done crown guards here. The crown itself is signed with a GS logo. It is screwed down, but in my opinion, it is not proportional to the rest of the watch. I actually measured this crown at 5.8 millimeters. It should easily be over six millimeters in my opinion, if you want to make it very usable. But on the flip side, because this is a quartz watch and there's no date, you're really only going to be changing the date like once every six months to account for daylight savings. And this watch is super accurate. So that is my overview for this Grand Seiko SBGX117. And I gotta say, at the end of the day, this is a phenomenal diver. I really wish Grand Seiko did not discontinue this watch or make it so hard to find these days because they really did knock it out of the park when it comes to an everyday grab-and-go robust diver. But as always, guys, I'd love to hear your feedback on your thoughts on this OG quartz diver from Grand Seiko and how you think it stacks up with uh, some of the newer releases that Grand Seiko has been putting out this year. Now, if you do enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to the channel. It always helps out. And as always, I can't wait to catch you guys in the next video.